Hi everybody, it's Jackie schomburg Minen. Today I'm gonna to do a quick warm up and I'm gonna make 13 four by five paintings, mixed media paintings. So this is something you can do when you're not sure, or you're, you're sure that you wanna make something but you're not sure what to make and you don't have a lot of time. Or if you do, you can make hundreds of these. So the first step is just to mix a couple colors and put them on the page. Easy peasy, right? Um, I've, we were on vacation for a couple of weeks, which was lovely, but I was very far away from my paints. So I wanted to ease myself back in. And sometimes a blank page or a blank canvas can be intimidating. That's for all of us. And I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't have like a vision or any real motivation to do something huge. So I thought I would start with something small and this is easy enough that it shouldn't psych you out. And if it does, do it anyway. It's tiny pieces of paper. I have these scraps laying around. It's just some watercolor paper. You will see it curl up a bit as the paint dries because I'm painting it, you know, some parts are wet, some parts are dry, so it's a little bit strange, but it flattens out in the end. Um, I'm using here some Titan Green Pale and some white mixed with yellow ochre to get that creamy color. So drying these off, as you can see, is problematic. I should have, you can put a little bit of tape underneath the pieces so they don't blow around. Um, but I like to keep things exciting. Now I'm going through, and because it's me, I'm using black and black and white collage pieces, but once you get something down that covers a decent amount of the background, now grab your collage papers and see what you can do with those. Again, we're not looking for masterpieces. We're just looking for something to kind of spark your creative mojo and get you back in the rhythm, warm you up for your next piece of art, or just give you a, a small project for the day. All in all, I probably spent an hour on this. Yeah, probably about an hour. Obviously it's time lapse right now, so it's speed, sped up a little bit, so you guys don't need to see all of the real time of me making decisions. But it was really fun because again, if you're not sure, you know, if you're feeling unsure of yourself and you want to create something, but you feel intimidated by a blank page, cut the page, make it smaller and just put paint on it. Because once you get started, things feel better and better and better. And if you don't like it, you can color the whole thing over, start over with it, recycle it, move on. Very low pressure. <laughs> I'm all about very low stakes. It's just paper. It's just paint. And when I'm picking my pieces, I'm looking for things that are different. So if I have something that is a circle blob of paint in the background, maybe I'll put something square or rectangular on it probably not another circle. Or if it is a circle, it'll be a circle in a different way. Like these green squares, I not green, these black squares I have that I've torn a circle out in the, in the negative space. So that way it also reads as a square, but there's a circle in it. And even though these collage papers are all they all have black in them and lots of them have white in them. You can tell that they have different visual weight. So the solid black pieces feel like they have, well, they do have more visual weight. So they feel heavier. And the pieces that are mostly white with, you know, thinner black lines on them will feel lighter. So that corn cob pattern on the lower left hand side right now that feels lighter, that pattern, than the larger black collage piece to the left of it. So you can also play around with that. Mix some heavy things with some light things. 
change up the size. Try not to put the same size pieces on your page. Or if you're curious, by all means, do it and see what see how it feels. Again, there's no right or wrong. These are just guidelines. That's what I typically do. I've really been loving neutrals lately. I know that right now it does not look like my normal color palette. Stay tuned. <laughs> That'll change. But starting with the background soft and quiet, I'm not sure why I'm in it, but right now I'm, I'm really loving it. And adding the black on top makes a big impact. And adding any color on top of that makes an even bigger impact because of the contrast against the quiet of the background. Having lighter background also, again, it's lighter visual weight. So there's less to compete with. Anything that I add on from now on, there's just less to compete with having it be a light neutral background. All right, moving these all back into the frame. And because it's me, I'm adding some red. And some pencil lines before I commit to the red. Again, looking for differences. This is a very thin pencil line. The lines of the collage pieces the shapes are thicker and heavier in most cases, so adding the thin line is just another difference. Red can be tricky because the value of red is actually quite dark. So if I made this black and white right now, red, if you switch it to grayscale, looks very dark. Um, but just, just a factoid for you. <laughs> Doesn't influence me and in, I guess what I'm using it with black, it's fine with me. But I, I also want to have other color variation. And it's interesting as you're as you add brighter colors it's easy for your eye to know where to go right i'm adding black and red and your eye naturally goes to the biggest contrasts so where the blacks are dark your eye goes there if there's black and red where they meet that's where your eye goes So while I'm not talking about a focal point and I'm not specifically seeking a focal point, I'm keeping it in mind that wherever these two colors are, your eye will probably go to those areas. And because this is a warm up, you don't need very many supplies. So I used a small amount of the of the paint colors I used a, not even a handful of collage scraps and I have one sheet of red that I'm cutting up and tearing for this this part I'm very intentionally trying to make shapes that aren't common and that I don't typically use to keep things interesting for me. I'm 
Reminds me of a little fez, <laughs> that piece I just added. Like a little red hat. So I have my neutral background, which is kind of a base. It kind of grounds these other, you know, let's call them objects to the paper. So they're not just floating in space. With that set up, anything I do from here on out will pull attention or just be subtle additions to background, depending on the color, depending on the visual weight that I add, depending on the placement. As I'm going through this, I'm thinking, okay, is this red too big? It's a pretty big piece of red. Everything else is a smaller piece of red. But I did like that. And I'm purposely trying not to think too much. I'm trying to feel it out more than think it out. The next step for this particular project was to grab my Neocolor 2 crayons. I wanted Neocolor 1 crayons to use those, however, I didn't have this color in my Neocolor 1s. So I went with, went with the 2s thinking that I will just seal them with some gloss medium so they don't smear. It's funny too how your favorites change as you continue adding things. This is me filling those in a bit using the gloss medium. So I'm sealing them in, sealing the crayon and basically getting a, a I don't know, a little bit of a glaze. But my favorites always change as I go. I'll add one new mark and then something that I didn't like now becomes my favorite. And on my favorite, which I shouldn't have favorites, <laughs> it's unhelpful to have favorites, how's that? Then I'll make a mark, but I feel pressure. So then I make a mark that I don't like and then it's not my favorite anymore. And then I keep switching. Repeat, repeat, repeat. This is me sealing all of the crayons in. Every once in a while, I'm wiping off my color shaper just so I don't, as I'm picking up, some of the gloss medium ends up having the crayon in it. So in order not to spread that sea green color across everything else, I'm wiping it off every once in a while. I'm getting new medium.
any pieces that go over the edge, you can just trim off at any point. It's best to wait. I have found it's best to wait until they're dry. Otherwise, sometimes they can gum up your scissors or they pull off strangely. All right, so the, the, you've noticed potentially that some of these were curling up or curling back. All I'm doing to correct that is putting a layer, a thin layer of gloss medium on the back. This is thinner paper that I'm working with and it's tricky when you have some thick collage papers in some areas of the paper but not uniformly across because it dries at different speeds and it's thicker in different places so it doesn't bend in some areas and then it does bend in others. So I just took a minute to do that. And then if you stack them all up and put a book on them or just gently bend them back, they straighten out really nicely. And I'm glazing now with some green gold. to brighten things up a bit. You can see that I'm not doing anything, you know, I'm not sitting there pondering for minutes and minutes and minutes on what to do. The goal my goal for this is just to go through it quickly, get everything marked on with each material that I'm using so that I'm thinking less and I can create more. Warming my brain up to be more intuitive, go with the flow, react, and create. I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, I cannot believe that there were more than 8,000 people subscribed. That is amazing. So if you guys have not yet subscribed and you like my, seeing my videos, please subscribe. It means the world to me. And it helps the algorithm uh, share my videos with more people. So thank you for, for supporting me in that way. I really appreciate it. As a reminder, I do have workshops coming up. So please check the workshop page on my website, jackieschomberg.com slash workshops. All the information will be there. We still have a few spots left. There's one more free session and two five week workshops coming up. I hope to see you all soon and I hope you have a wonderful day.